Let us pray. Now, Lord, we have heard from you already. Feel like we're already anchored. So keep centering us in your word. May I decrease as you increase. May the words <coughs> that I speak, oh God, bring bring you praise and never, never shame. Enlighten our minds, soften our hearts, and unite us. That we might stop the fuss and cussing, all the things that we do that separate us. We might unite to serve your broken world. Mend it, fix it. You can help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Recently, I went to the head of Lou Theater uh, to see Marie and Rosetta. That's a play about the life of, <coughs> excuse me, Sister Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Tharp, I'm sorry, Sister Rosetta Tharp. And I, when it was over, it was hard to move. It, I sat there because the, move, move, the, the play was so reflective. If you know the life of Sister Rosetta, uh, you know that she sang a wide variety of music, even blues and jazz, rock and roll, gospel. Her struggle was finding her place in God's kingdom her, as a servant. What, Lord, what are you calling me to do? And what, but what she believed down in a, all of her being was that everything, every song that she came up with was inspired by God. And that was you know, that was debatable because on one side, the pop people and other people uh, and the gospel people just couldn't understand why she was singing blues and jazz and rock and roll. But but she felt she had a gift to the world and different ways to express it. To one group needed to hear the blues and one group needed to hear the gospel. And But to make a long story short, yeah, she struggled with her own fame and fortune, she had this rivalry with Mahalia Jackson. I don't know if Mahalia felt the same way, but she always referred to Mahalia Jackson. It's almost like she was trying to find her place. Instead of doing her thing, she was worried about Mahalia's place. And in our text, the disciples are talking to Jesus. That they're, they're, They are servants, called to be servants, and yet they're fussing and asking Jesus, well, you know, who's the most important? Who's on the left? Who's on the right? Jesus, uh, uh, instead of talking to him about their servanthood road, talking to him about their glory road, how can we get, how can we get top billing? How can we be the center of attention? We, we want to know, we want to be the most powerful people close to you, Jesus. We need to know who you consider the best of the best. And it, Jesus, his heart has to ache because he has been with them, teaching them, what servanthood means. And more than anything, he, he, he's shown them it is not about you. It is about the kingdom, which kingdom is community, is fellowship, is relationship. It is not about you. So left or right, up front or whatever, that, 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 that really doesn't matter. You are whining about the head table and who gets to sit at the head table. You're not talking about who gets to serve at the head table. So the question this morning are, is, are we head table people or are we servants? Do you come to the banquet expecting a seat of honor? Where's my special place? I need to be on the left of the president. I need to be on the right of the president. I'm the second head person in charge or I'm the head person. So I need the attention. And Jesus says the most important thing in our world today is not being served, the most important thing is finding ways to serve. That's what we do. And he says, if you're going to serve, you also have to understand, are you willing to go and drink this cup? Are you willing to go through all the things that I go through, even death? Are you willing as a Christian, man or woman, are you willing? Not thinking about, are you, are you going to die? But knowing that wherever I lead you, it could be hard times. It could be rough times but you are called to go because I'm already showing you the road, but I'm already going there leading you and guiding you. So settle down, take a breather and understand where your place is. 
and there's always a place for servants. That place is near and dear the master, and it, and it doesn't mean that you get top billing. It doesn't mean that you get up front right now, but it means at the end of that journey, guess what you get? At the end of that journey, through all the storms and trials and tribulations of life, at the end of this short journey from the cradle to the grave, hallelujah, think what you're going to get. Because heaven is real. It is not just real in your soul. It is real. It is a place. It is a place where we find the master, where we get to sit and sing and pray and talk to Jesus all day, all night long. But he is saying to us, sell down and remember that it's not always about you. If you're watching television, if you're watching the news, you're seeing the anger over whether or not to get a shot, whether or not to get a vaccination. You're seeing the anger uh, about abortion, the anger about so many things. Instead of people talking and building relationships, they're building walls. you either for me or against me. There's no middle ground. It's my way or the highway. Nobody's bringing the cross in and saying, around this cross, we'll decide what's good for the kingdom. No, I think this ought to be. There are people who now say they know better than doctors and scientists whether or not to get a shot. How, 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 how? One of my good friends always said, logic can't take out what it didn't put in. A lot of this stuff makes no sense. But some people who have not even finished high school are deciding, I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking education, hear me. But some people who have not even finished high school are making decisions as if they know more than doctors and scientists. And these people who have been doing this stuff for years, they make decisions. They make decisions for a woman's body. If a man had to have a baby, we wouldn't even, could have a baby, we wouldn't even be making these decisions because they're sexist decisions based on what we want and what we desire. Jesus is saying servanthood is not about you being in control. It's not about you having the power. It's about you asking the right questions. How can we best stay in the realm of faith? How can we best serve the master? How can we do this with honor and integrity? How can we listen and love everybody? To beat up school board members who, who vote against you, who have, a, who have an idea against what you believe, to say, I'll hunt you down, I'll kill you. I know where you live to harass your children. The evil of the world that some people do in the name of God has nothing to do with God. Some people get up every Sunday morning, and go to church. Those same people go to church and praise God and get out and behave that way Monday through Saturday. It makes no sense. And Jesus is saying, if you're going to serve me, you have to listen to me. You have to follow me. It is not about politics. It's not about Democrats or Republicans. It is about, not about North or South, rich or poor, black or white. It is not about those things. It is about the gospel, which is mandated for everybody the same. So understand this. I've got a place for you as a servant. But you got to have some humility. I've got a place for you as a servant. You've got to have some patience. And more important than anything else, I've got a place for you as a servant, but you've got to have some love. You've got to have some unconditional love, which means that you don't have to do what, the things I want you to do for me to love you. I am going to love you anyway. As a pastor, I've never really been fond of hearing other pastors say, turn to your neighbor and say, uh, that's, that's, a, so, that's a thing. This is one of my things. I don't not doesn't do a lot for me. But the one thing I think we all can turn to our neighbors and say, and be honest about it, I love you. I love you because God loves me. I love you because I have been born and raised in an environment of love. And I know that I cannot function. I can't make it without that love. I cannot make it. It's amazing. One of my Friends who's a nurse in Chicago talked about babies being born who are, who are just constantly born sick and sometimes born drug addicted. And their survival depends on so many things. But she said, well, the nurses that come in and hold them and sing to them and hold them and sing to them and just, just they feel the warmth of the hands, they feel the, the concern and, and the security of this person 
who loves me, who don't even know me, has no biological relationship to me. It matters, that touch matters, that unconditional love matters. And, and, and babies who would ordinarily not make it thrive because they can feel the warmth and tenderness and the love. We need to feel that warmth and tenderness and that the world needs to feel like no matter what I do or say, somebody's gonna hold me, somebody's gonna love me, somebody's gonna respond to me anyway. And I'm not, I'm not weighed down by the garbage of the world, about the, by the politics and about the hatred and about all the stuff that, stuff that define others. I am defined by what God says I ought to be about. I am about love. I'm about love. I'm about love. I'm about care. And it doesn't matter. I'm not getting up every morning and being bitter. I'm not getting up putting people down. I'm not getting that ridicule in the world. I'm getting up with joy in my heart and in my soul, knowing that, Lord, I came here to serve. I didn't come here to be served. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a place at the table to wash feet. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the place at the table to feed the hungry. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a place at the table to love these babies. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a place for servants. And that place is with Jesus. There's a place for servants, and that place is in the midst of the poor and the broken. There's a place for servants, and that place that, that place of service is with the homeless, with the drug addicted, with the prostitutes. There's a place for servants. It may not be a safe place, but it's a place of honor. It's a place of integrity, and it is, it is a holy place. And if you represent the kingdom of God, your church is a holy place, your home is a holy place, Wherever you place your feet, that's a holy place because you honor and represent the master and the kingdom. You are a servant, a real servant. You don't need to be praised. You don't need somebody to give you a pat on the back. You just need to know that you're loved and that you love God's world. Servants don't miss anything. Servants don't miss seeing the need. Servants don't forget. Servants are constant in the way they see life, even with heartbreak and headache, whatever the situation goes in your life, even with circumstances that bog you down, we rise up and say, thank you, Lord, for the experience. Recently, I have dealt with issues, family-related issues that have broken my heart and look in the pieces because I've seen families do things that you never, I never thought they would do. And in the midst of that, you still got to find a way to say, I love you anyway. I care for you anyway. You, you, you still have to find a way to say, I'm going to see tomorrow. And my prayer is that the family, the broken family ties, somehow God will help us find a way to mend this. Because Christians believe in hope. Sometimes we hope against hope, but we hope and trust. And we don't ever give up on anything. It's, it's some things you just want to walk away from when families get so crazy. Just walk away. But God made us family. And you can't walk away. You can't walk away from the family of God no matter what. No matter when your heart gets broken, no matter if people disappoint you, no matter if you disappoint others, no matter if you need to be forgiven or you forgive others, no matter what happens, you still got to stay there and work it out. Might take years, might take months, but you got to work it out. But in the middle of working it out, you realize that you can't fix anybody. All you can do is pray to God that this will be resolved with your help. God, you've got to, Holy Spirit's got to do this. I, I can't do anything. J John is going left, I'm going right. You got to help us meet in the middle, Lord. You got to be the one to do that. If you're going to be a servant, storms are going to come. Your heart's going to get broken. Family might disappoint you. Spouse might disappoint you. Children might disappoint you. You might disappoint them. All kind, the devil throws all kinds of things our way. But once you realize, as, as Sister Rosetta thought, realize this is life. Life ain't ever easy. Life ain't ever a breeze. The ups and downs, the days sometimes you feel like the windshield, some days you feel like, feel like the bug. Those windshield days, you just run in the glory. I, I can do anything. And when you get splashed against the windshield, you feel like the bug. 
You want to give up and throw your hands up. But don't you ever give up. No matter what happens, know that God is going to pick you up. Know that God is going to carry you. No matter, no matter what happens in life, you as a servant can say, I'm wounded, but I'm still going to be a healer. I'm broken, but I'm still going to be a healer. No matter what comes, you know the joy, the sun's going to invent, God so made the world that no matter what storm happens, sun's going to come up. No matter what, how bad the winter is, the spring rose is going to bloom. No matter what, how much tornado damage, we're going to rebuild because we are the servants of God. We know who we are. We know whose we are. The challenge today is when you look and hear the disciples ask, we are road, they say to Jesus, you know, we are road dogs, Lord. Where do we, where do we belong? Where are we going to be? Where we we got we to gotta get top billing. And he reminds us, he reminds us, it ain't, it ain't about top billing. It ain't, it ain't about who's number one in the band. It's about the music the band plays together. If you watch the movie, um, one of my favorite movies was Five Heartbeats about a, about a band, young men who've grown up, teenagers, uh, developed into a popular uh, uh, band and group. And as long as they, as long as they focus on the group, they were successful. As long as they, as long as they responded to the needs of each other, they were successful. One of the men ended up getting his girlfriend pregnant, and, and he was thinking about getting an abortion or something. And all, and all of them who'd never made a lot of money, you could see them sitting around a circle, taking the money out of their pockets. And no, don't, don't do that. You know, you need money to help support the baby here. All the money that they had raised, they put it in the hands of, of this one guy because they were brothers, they were a family. And while they were thought like that, they 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 were successful. But then one of the one of the singers who was the lead singer, he got above his raising. He got to be more important than everybody else. He got so important, he just started doing drugs and 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 all kinds of crazy things. And 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 the band broke up, the band separated. Because he had forgotten that together, together, the strength of the band together, he'd, he'd forgotten that, 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 that one person, one person can't be the band. And when he fell on hard times, he realized that it's not about me. He realized that I, I needed the group and I needed a group. And in the end of, at the end of the day, the group did come back to him because that's what we do. As family of God, no matter when somebody shows up, when somebody goes crazy, we still allow them to come back home. If you're going to be a servant, if you understand the role of the servant, you realize that you got to have that time. You got to have that patience. You got to care. And above all, you got to be willing to forgive. Are you as a servant willing to forgive and move on? Are you willing to just keep loving people in spite of how many times they'll break your heart? It's your challenge, your challenge to live out your life in such a way that is never about you. It's always about what you can do at the table, who's broken, who's lost, who needs me. And at the end of the day, when you have a place to serve and God has given you a place to serve, when your time comes and you stand before his throne, he will say to you, to all those who love his appearing, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've had some good days. You've had some bad days, but you didn't complain. You've had some weary days, but you didn't complain. You've had some lonely days, but you didn't complain. You've had some... Days filled with death and agony. You watch your friends, the best friends die, your, your parents, your children. You had accidents. You had all kinds of un, un, things you didn't plan on, but you're still standing. You didn't complain. So at the end of the day, we can say to the master, thank you. Thank you for my journey. Thank you for my life. As for me and my family, we are going to serve the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. 
Lord, you have given us a place to serve and it is not easy. We might cry a river of tears, Lord, but you always dry them up. Storms rage and you still allow the sun to come up. And we are surrounded by a mighty, mighty cloud of witnesses. So we give you thanks. For those who are with us that on Facebook and who feel the storm raging and who have said, Lord, I, I hear you. I want to come in out of the storm. I repent of my sins, Lord. I want you to come into my life. That's all you have to do. Repent of say, yeah, I repent, Lord. I, I trust you and now I want to obey. And you can come to seminary, you know how to contact us or you, any church that's open in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll be glad to glad, guide you on your journey. We would love to have you at seminary, but don't let that be your distance from us. Don't let that be a distraction. For those who will be with us doing glory sighting, it's the same is true for you. We give it all over to God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.